Hey, Tackle Painter back out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop. Welcome back out to the shop. So I've had a lot of time this week in order to get a whole bunch of stuff done for you guys. I've had quite a few orders that have actually come in over the last week. And by quite a few, I mean like four. I've had four orders come in, uh, but they've all been really cool orders. So I've been really excited to get those done. Um, some of them actually, I didn't have enough wood prepared for them. So if you guys have been following me on Instagram at Suits Crafting, uh, I've actually been stabilizing a bunch of stuff this week. And so I'll get to more of that later. Um, but yeah, I've gotten a lot of orders. I've got, uh, let's see, I've got a Coco Bolo editor gunmetal pen, uh, doing a G2 conversion on that one. And then I've got a Curly Koa editor pen, uh, that we're going to be doing a Frixion conversion on. So, Pretty excited for those. Uh, I also had one customer um, who's one of my Instagram followers that actually has ordered two of my river table blanks. So we're going to be getting those together. And that was when I realized I don't have enough spalted maple burl and spalted maple and curly uh, maple set up and stabilized in order to do these blanks. I had a bunch. You guys put in orders. I've shipped them off. And all of a sudden it's like, oh. I need to make some more. Luckily, I had a bunch in stock, and so I've already got them dried out, stabilized, and got them sitting over here in a box that I'll show you guys later. So I've just got a few things that I want to just run through. Um, I know that you guys saw my video last week, and if you caught that, then you know that I had an Amboynia burl uh, that exploded on me, and I was working on getting it fixed. So I figured I'd start off with showing you guys how that turned out. I am so happy with how this thing turned out. So I'm going to give you the reveal. So there's the Amboynia Burl. It looks really nice from that side. And then we come around and then just the little reveal right there. Just gorgeous. Absolutely love how the opal looks inside of the pen. Now I know it's not opal. It's actually Mother of Pearl. Um, but it just looks stupendous. It's got such a vibrant, just shell look to it. It glistens it captures the light the little flakes actually are like um facing at you flat so they catch and they change colors greens and blues and reds and it's just so pretty i don't know if i can get it here but i'll i'll throw up photos so you guys can take a look at it i got some really good images captured of it um but it's super nice i was going to do a uh conversion on it with a g2 conversion or even like one of the frixions or one of those others and I decided just to stick with the rollerball. I figured I'll go with the rollerball. I've got so many people ordering these uh, and getting the G2 conversions. that I've got a whole bunch of the rollerball sitting around in my shop. And to be honest, the rollerball actually writes quite nicely. It's got a nice smooth writing to it. And then the black on it is really bold. And I fill out a lot of paperwork, a lot of documents in my work. And having a really bold, smooth writing black pen is actually really beneficial. And so I pulled this out a few times at work and actually one time at a uh, doctor's appointment for my daughter. And I've already had a few people comment and ask me to make some blanks and on purpose chunk out some sections so I can add in that pearl effect. And so that's kind of exciting. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to chunk out the section, but I think what I might do is I might do like some uh, scalloped blanks and then scallop the blank and then fill it in with opal and then scallop it from another angle and fill that in with opal and maybe do um, some different variations on that and see what people think. So I think it'll be fun. I've been doing some research on scalloping pen blanks and uh, we'll see how that turns out. If you guys want to see how that's done, go ahead and let me know in the comments section down below and I'll be sure to do a tutorial on it. So last night I got those other pens drilled and glued and they're ready to turn today. But while they were gluing up, I decided, you know what, I'm going to turn a pen that I've had sitting up in this top corner. This is like my want to get done for myself or research shelf that I've got up here in the very top above the camera. You can't see it. Um, but I've had a pen that's been sitting up there for a while. It's a uh, Slimline Pro uh, click pen, and it's a maple burl, and it's a cosmic cloud blank. The blue that's in there, I actually will transition to purple at the right angles, which I can't get with the lighting the way that I've got it, um, but it does transition and it looks really cool. I was thinking about keeping this one for myself, but I think what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to pair it up with a nice gift box and I'll throw this online so you guys can purchase it. Um, I've got this nice new Amboynia Burl pen that I'm in love with, so I was going to do this one up for myself and I was going to carry it myself, but I am going to actually throw it out to you guys. So if you guys want this, 
come by my Etsy shop. I'll be selling it on there with a nice gift box. You can either get it for yourself or get it for a friend, a uh, family member, whatever you want. Um, it does have glitter and things in it, so it does kind of sparkle and twinkle, and it's got that color shift to it, and it's really a nice pen. And then that section of maple burl on top is really a pretty maple burl. It's got really nice figuring to it and some eyes, and it's it's nice overall. I really like it. It's got a nice clicking action for you click addicts out there. You know who you are. Um, it's a nice pen, so if you guys want to pick that up, come by my Etsy shop, and I'll be happy to sell it to you. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll have probably already seen the video that I put up of me cutting up some Amboina Burl in order to get these pens done, those uh, Rollerball G2 converted pens. And uh, it's actually my second to last piece of Amboina Burl that I've got in stock. And the one piece that I do have left of the red Amboina, I actually won't sell. It's the very first piece that I ever acquired on eBay. And it's got such a beautiful appearance to it that I actually like to take photos of things on top of it and it gives a really nice contrast for some stuff. So I actually will never sell it. It's the very first piece that I ever bought of wood online. It's kind of like like you've reached a certain accomplishment point, and it's like I had a little extra money to get something super exotic, and so that was the very first piece that I ever got. And so it's one of those, like, you, you buy a restaurant, and the very first dollar you ever make, you put it in a plaque, you hang it on the wall, and it's something you're proud of. And that's kind of what that piece of Amboina Burl is for me. I bought it when I first started making some good money and wanted to get something super exotic and I picked it up and I got it actually at a really good price um, but it's a proud moment for me and so I actually like to just hold on to it. I like to look at it occasionally. It's a really beautiful piece. But because of that, um, after cutting up that last section, I needed to get some more. So I actually found a guy online that I was able to pick up some Amboina Burl from. So it arrived in the mail actually just yesterday. And here it is. It's just a nice piece of Amboina Burl, real nice section, about two inches thick, so I'll be able to get plenty of blanks out of it. Um, it's about about two inches thick, and then it's four and a half to five and a half inches wide, and then it's about about eight and a half inches long. So it's a real nice section of Amboina Burl. Really happy uh, with how it turned out. The transaction was really super simple uh, with the guy that I got it from and I could not be happier with it. It's really a nice piece. I'm kind of thinking that with the way that the grain goes, I'm, I might be able to get away with actually cutting the blanks uh, width wise from here to here because I think that on most of them it's going to be wide enough to actually accomplish that. And so I might be able to get about eight blanks cut up side to side here and then um, going down the middle, get a double of that, so it'd be 16 blanks. So I'm going to do some measuring, draw it out, and see. Um, if not, then I'll cut them standard, and then I'll have a section left here on the end that I'll have to figure out something with. But it's going to be it's going to be a nice blank. I, I'm really happy with it. And uh, if you guys are looking to get some nice pieces, check out eBay because there are actually plenty of sellers. The only thing that I recommend is that you know your wood species know what their features are when you're looking online because there definitely are some people out there that are not selling authentic pieces of wood and so really read your reviews know what your wood species are supposed to look like and then look at pictures i've definitely found pieces of amboina burl online that actually didn't look much like amboina burl they looked more like a Kaliba. Uh, burl or a red molly burl and so be sure that you know what your species are and what they look like uh, before you purchase online. Um, I've spoken with a lot of guys that have been online looking for maple burl sections and I, I always ask them like okay what kind of maple burl are you looking for um, and the pieces that they show me always have like spalting or rotted out sections in them and it's like that's a nice piece but if you don't stabilize it that's going to be really soft wood because it's got this section of um, rotted out spalting area which is gorgeous if you stabilize it and use it in that manner otherwise it's soft and it will uh, not hold its form well so get to know your woods know what you need to look for while you're selling while when you're buying online and you can really score some really gorgeous pieces I also had a few more pieces arrive in the mail. Um, you guys have heard me talk about this gentleman in the past. His name's Ryan McCarthy, and he's on Instagram as well. He actually sells a lot of wood, and recently he's also been selling some hybrid blanks, and I, I've heard 
discussion that he may be looking to actually make himself up hybrid blanks. Um, but him and I have actually been working and we've been doing some hybrid blanks and I purchased some wood from him recently that I'll show you now. He actually acquired some pieces of manzanita burl, some really nice sections that I picked up from him. Uh, really excited to get to go out and use these. They've got some really interesting funky features to them. I'm really uh, looking forward to getting these cut up and doing something with. Not sure exactly what, but when I saw them, I couldn't pass them up. And so we're gonna do we're gonna do something with them. It's gonna be fun, and uh, I might throw out some pen blanks for you guys that you can pick up uh, using some of this stuff. And so it'll be it'll be a good time. And then one that I got from him that I'm really excited for is this little piece of black locust. He had this uh, for sale online. You can see right in here it's actually got some figuring. If you guys know what your bark structures are when you see a, a section that's rippling like that on the face of the bark or the face of the outside of the wood, then you know that that's got some curl or some figuring in it. And so this has got actually some figuring inside of a black locust. And if you guys know your, your woods, you'll know that black locusts will actually glow under a black light. So I'm really curious to see, I wanna cut a section into here that is a uh, pen blank. And then it'll actually probably go right down here. And then it might even get some of like the crotch section of the two pieces here coming together. So that'll be kind of fun seeing both of the eyes of the center of the wood coming together and adjoining right in that area. Um, but black locusts will glow under a black light. So I'm kind of thinking that we might uh, turn the lights off out here, get a good black light going, and then turn ourselves up a pen with just the glow of the shavings coming off. I think that would be fun. Um, of course, we'll do everything in a safe manner, but I, I'm kind of excited to do that. I think it'll be fun. And look at the colors that are in there. I mean, the colors almost are along the lines of like a piece of olive wood or something, just the really dark to light transitions. It's really an exciting uh, wood to be working with. Being in the Portland Gresham area, I have the good fortune that I actually have a lot of woodworking companies that are around. I've got Woodcraft and Tiger. I've got Rockler down in Beaverton. I've also got a Woodcrafters right here on 6th Street uh, in downtown Portland. And so I went by there today because I needed to pick up some more curly maple because I had depleted my stock of curly maple. So I went there and picked up some more curly maple and I figured I'd just show those to you here. They have what are called cutoff bins that you can come and pick through. And that's where I found this gorgeous piece of curly maple inside of there. They call it figured maple. And it is absolutely a beautiful piece. Looking forward to cutting this up, turning it into some pen blanks. Um, it's sitting at about two, maybe three feet long. And then it's about three inches thick. So it's a really nice piece. Got some good curl to it. And the same goes for this one. This one's really, uh, really rough still. It doesn't have any sanding or anything done to it. and uh, But it's got some really good gorgeous curls. You can see how tightly they are rippling right through that uh, rough section on the face when they dried it out. Um, so this is completely unsanded. It's still in its rough form, but you can see all that curling. And if you were here, I'd let you feel it because it feels really interesting. Um, but yeah, it got a lot of good curl to it. And I'm really looking forward to getting that cut up, getting those dried out and stabilized. Because stabilization really accentuates the contrast of the curl in the wood. So I'm going to get those stabilized and we'll have those all ready for pens and then for the river table blanks. And while I was there, I accidentally looked into the bin that was next to the figured maple. and It was the quilted maple bin and I found a piece in there that was sitting right up in the front. And they probably did it on purpose because they knew somebody like me was going to come along and see it and not be able to pass it up. But check out this gorgeous piece of quilted maple. It is absolutely beautiful. It's got gorgeous quilting, not just curly, not just figuring, but actual uh, quilted maple. It is gorgeous. And it was actually really comical when I went to check out because the guys that were there at the counter to, to ring me up um, were looking at it going, wow, those are some really pretty pieces of wood you got there. It's like, yeah, I'm pretty excited for them. And they asked me, they're like, well, what do you plan on doing with those? And so I told him, I was like, well, I'm a pen maker, and so I'm going to cut them up into some pen blanks, uh, at least with the curly maple. 
and the guys got their eyes got all big like you're just gonna cut that up into pen blanks and I'm like at least with the curly maple I'm gonna come up into pen blanks the quilted maple I think I'm gonna save it and maybe do like some knife scales uh, or even do some jewelry box tops with them and they kind of like breathe a sigh of relief like oh my gosh because if you qu cut up quilted maple uh, into pen blanks it often doesn't look like much uh, it kind of just looks like curly maple, but when you leave it in a wide, flat platform, you can really see that quilting and how it differentiates uh, opposed to just curly or figured maple. And so I, I made them really nervous when I told them I was just going to cut them up into pen blanks. Their eyes got all big, and you could tell they like were breathing a little heavy and were about to start sweating. And then I gave them that sigh of relief by telling them, no, nah, I'm actually going to just do that with the curly maple, but the quilted maple I'm going to do something else with. <laughs> And so, yeah, I like to mess with them sometimes. It's not very nice, but, uh, you know, fellow woodworkers can appreciate each other, and they knew that I, I did that intentionally. <laughs> well, for a little while, it's going to be like Christmas out in the shop. Like I told you earlier, I've got a whole bunch of stabilized blanks that I've got to do something with now because I still got them all set up here in aluminum foil. Uh, I'll throw a photo up here. Uh, my oven looked awfully suspicious. You know, anybody that's been in law enforcement knows what it is that they usually package up in aluminum foil. And maybe some of you guys that like to watch crime dramas will know what my oven looked like. Uh, but yeah, it looked a little suspicious with all these packages of aluminum foil in there. Uh, but I got some pieces stabilized up. Here's a piece of curly maple right there that you can look at just as a little tease, a little wood porn. But, uh, also got some curly koa stabilized up here as well. This is just a uh, single end piece, but got some really nice pieces going. But I got curly koa, I've got spalted maple burl, I got spalted maple, and I've got curly maple all in this box that I've got to start unwrapping. It's, like I said, it's going to be like Christmas out here for a bit, just unwrapping packages and seeing... Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> That's it for the Shop Talk Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining me out here in the shop today. I uh, just want to remind you guys to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Check out some of my other videos on the sides. I'm going to be uh, getting busy. We're going to be having the holiday season coming up. Um, I'm doing a lot of stabilizing here recently. I've got some blue dyed uh, blanks going in the, pre or in the vacuum chamber right now. So be sure to keep an eye out on the Etsy shop for everything coming available. I'm going to be getting that pen up there with a gift box. So thanks so much for joining me out in the shop today. This is Tactical Painter, signing out.